Welcome back to this demonstration of ongoing VMS. My name is Karen and in this part I'm going to show you how you can manage the article register, doing inbound deliveries and transactions within the warehouse, such as moving goods and inventory count. We will also look into managing attributes attached to the individual items, such as batch or serial numbers. There's a few ways of adding articles to ongoing. If you have an integration, the article register will most probably be synced from the external system. But it's still good to know how to add and edit articles manually in ongoing. You find the article register from warehouse articles. And here you have update goods info and articles. Articles is the article register containing the general information about the article. And update goods info will show you a representation of all the physical items you have in stock and you can edit details about them that are not general. For example, the barcode is an attribute that is the same for all items of an article, and therefore it's placed in the article register, but the batch number is specific to certain items of the article. You might have many batches of the same article, and therefore this is edited under Update Goods Info. Press New Article and fill in the information that you want to keep about the article. You must have a unique identifier for the article, and this is normally placed at the article number. The article name is normally shown at order rows and in the scanning module, so make sure to keep the article as suitable name, even if it's not mandatory. Fill in the rest of the information that you want to keep in ongoing, and make it a habit to use a stock keeping unit, SKU. This is the smallest unit of the article that you would do any handling of. Let's say you have a package of six bottles of apple juice. If your customer is not going to sell the individual bottles, your stock keeping units would be pieces, and one piece would be the full six pack package. You can then enter the information that one piece contains six sub articles per SKU. Add a barcode if you want to use scanning. If the articles come into the warehouse in boxes or pallets, you can enter the barcodes for those here, and the number of items per box or pallet. This can later be used to automatically multiply the number of received boxes or pallets with the quantity on them. It is common to work with fixed picking locations, and if you wish to do so, add a location here. There are other fields available than the ones shown by default, for example size or color. As always, if you see something that you want to use in your system but you can't find it, just talk to your contact person at ongoing. If you want to use structure or production, First, create items to build up the structure or production item. And then create a virtual product, the structure, and add a containing article to it. You can also import articles from an Excel file. If you go to Register Import Articles, you find a template. You don't have to fill in all the columns. If you want to add something that is not included in the template, you can just write your own heading and map it to the proper field afterwards. So now when we have the article register set up, we can start doing inbound deliveries. It is possible to import stock values, but here we look into the two standard ways of doing inbound deliveries in ongoing, with an inbound order or a free inbound delivery. We also see how to do this directly in the system or in the scanning module. If you go to order, in order list, you find all the in orders you have in your system for this goods owner. An in-order is often created by an external system and comes through an integration. They can also be imported from an Excel sheet or, as we will do here, created in the system. If you want to connect the in-order to a supplier, you can select the supplier in the list or press new to add a new supplier. Enter the order information and press create to go to the page where you add the in-order rows. 
add the number of items that are expected on the in order and press the shopping cart to place the articles on the order. And when you're done, press close order. Now you find your in order in the in order list. It has the status notified. If you want to receive the goods, mark the order and press receive. Here I can see what in order I am working with at the moment. In this dropbox I select which order row I want to work with. And in the fields above the dropbox I can search for a specific order row or article. You enter many items you have received and then the location. You can mark the show location suggestion to get suggestions of where to place the goods. You can use different suggestion types. Here I can see the default picking location or change to a location where I currently have the article in stock. I can also get multiple suggestions if I need more than one location. I just type in how many I want to place on each location and then I get the amount of suggestions I need. You then have to specify all attributes that is connected to the items you are receiving. Those are attributes that is not general for all items of this article, but unique for the ones that you are receiving at the moment. An example is serial number that is often used for only one item, or batch or expiry date that is the same for a number of items. You then press save to finish the inbound delivery of this article. If you scroll down, you see an overview of what has been received. Then you move on to the next article. If you check show list, you can view all order rows as once and receive them together. When you're done with all the goods in the in order, you press received. This will change the status of the in order to received or deflection if the advised number of items did not match the received count. By expanding the own order, you can find more details about what has been received, by whom and when. You can take out a receipt note or have it automatically sent to your customer. Before we look into the scanning module for inbound orders, we receive goods without an in order. If you go to Warehouse Receive Goods, you get the same page as where we just received on an in order. If I uncheck the in order checkbox and select my articles, I can do exactly as before to receive without an in order. And if you scroll down, you can still see the overview of what has been received. In ongoing, the scanning module is also web-based and running your web browser. Therefore, you can use any device with internet connection, a large enough screen, and the ability to scan the barcodes you want to use. Tablets, computers, or phones with connected scanners are common to use, as is regular hand scanners. In the description box below, I've added some links for more information about the scanning module. When the good has arrived, change the in order status to arrival space. You can do this by a manual update of the status or pressing the arrived button. This will make the in order visible in the scanner. In the scanner, you go to inbound scanning and then select the in order you are working with in the list. Scan an article, the number of items and where you place it. When you want to move goods, you can either do it from Warehouse Stock Movements You can also move goods using the scanning module. In this particular scanning, we move all goods from one location to another. There are two ways of doing stock taking. Either you do it as you go by just typing in the correct number of items on the location. If you're using batches, make sure to use the batch based inventory type and article item base if you're using serial numbers. The other option is to create an inventory task. This will lock all items included in the task and no picking should take place during the count.
Afterwards, you can review the result from the different counts before you accept the changes and close the inventory task. Stock taking can of course also be done in the scanning module. If you want to change attributes connected to the item, you go to Warehouse Update Goods Info. Here you can view all items in your system and edit data such as the expiry date, batch or lock individual items. This can be used if you have items that are broken or for any other reason are not allowed to be picked. This was all for part 2. In part 3 we will look at outbound processes for specific types of good flows.